Okay, the source of the activity started at the sun right here. This is region 1520. You can see it's very large relative to the rest of the sun. And actually, it's going to rotate to the right over the next five or six days and disappear over the limb of the sun. So it all started right here. The forecasters analyzed the energy that was involved in the eruption as it left this region yesterday. The next step in the process is actually to look at the solar wind. Where, where is this eruption propagating? And in this, this is a model output right here. And the, the pinwheel at the bottom is actually looking down on the sun in the middle. And the Earth is out to the right-hand side. If you look closely, you can actually see the modeled coronal mass ejection going out into a stream that, that already exists in the solar wind. So it isn't that it goes out into a vacuum. There's something out there already that it's got to make its way through. So this model shows, yes, indeed, the trajectory is on a path to go by the Earth. Earth, and it gives the forecasters really a good idea as to when to expect it to come by. The next question, though, is, OK, so what? It's going to come by the Earth. What's it going to do to the Earth's magnetic field? Here's another model up here that shows the current state of the Earth's magnetic field, at least as far as the location and the equatorward extent of the auroral oval. Right now, you can see the auroral oval, the green arc up at the top, is pretty high latitude. And it's not terribly intense, which indicates a pretty quiet set of geomagnetic conditions. Probably in a day or so, you'll see the whole structure move more equatorward and intensify as the effects of the CME start to come into play.